number 41 if I'm almost correct then uh, I have thought to continue means revive, revive, revive the previous lecture and to continue a bit further ahead because the handout was reproduced because I made some amendments or adjustments to it not much but few so if you go to the page number one if I revise what I have done last week. So we explained cause. Cause means something that is necessary for a reality to arise, conditioned realities to arise, sustain in generations and to grow. These are the three factors. Cause is necessary for arising, sustaining in generations and to grow. Grow means to develop. <coughs> Then we have uh, different uh, synonyms for causes, which I have given in bold letters. Then in, the, in, ter in terms of dhammas, cause can be a reality, something related to a reality, or concept or an unconditioned state, which is the Nibbana. So all can be causes. That's what I have mentioned in the second paragraph. But when it comes to the Pachyupanna means the effect, the Pali word for uh, effect is Pachyupanna, it's a reality. It always has to be a reality, but a conditioned reality, not the Nibbana, which is a reality, but it doesn't have a beginning and an end. It doesn't depend on any other, re any other cause for its, its existence. Then the concepts are not effects because they do not exist in reality. So whatever, if something is a effect or pachu panna, it has to be a reality, a conditioned reality. But if something, if for to become a cause, it is not necessarily it should be a, always a reality. A reality, something related to a reality. Why do I say related to reality? Especially I was focusing on the ten anipanna rupas, which are not ultimate realities but related to the realities, and also uh, the concepts and the unconditioned state. Also, the characteristics which are related to realities like anicca, dukkha, anatta, characteristic of impermanence, characteristic of suffering, characteristic of non-selfness, these uh, are also can be causes. So then, uh, last week I gave a very, I would call a detailed and complicated uh, explanation, a little bit of complicated explanation on how many types of uh, how to examine the causes so the the formula which i used was which is written in the ball letters which was not in the previous handout imasmin sati idam hoti imasuppada idam upajati so this and imasmin asati idam hoti imas niroda idam nirujjati this is this can be said as the basic formula basic theory of the uh, causality in buddhism so all the causal relationships, dependent origination, 24 pachayas, all are made based on this basic theory. The commentators explain the first phrase, first sentence, imas mean sati, idang hoti, imas upada, idang upajiti. Actually, within these two phrases, the uh, first, second is the emphasis, emphasizing of the first. So it means, when it is said, imas mean sati, idang hoti, and imasupada idang upajati, they are identical, they are not different. Then imasping asati idang hoti, imasa niroda idang nirujati, they are also identical, the both. 
So to understand this, we discussed about various types of upada, various types of nirodha, various types of santatha. Santatha means the nature of existing, various types of asantatha, non-existence. And I knew it, I know it was it was a bit complicated, but I'll start with that again because I want to show how important this kind of analysis is in, in order to understand the causal relationships with, uh, uh, with clarity. So as if I go into the normal diagram, I normally go, go. So we have we divide it into three lives, for example. These are the three lives. So normally I used to uh, draw the chittas in this manner. So a life is a production of a past karma. As long as the karma remains, the life can continue. Life means the continuation of nama and rupa. We call this the samsara. But another thing that sometimes we miss out is when we talk about samsara in Buddhism, we give a lot of emphasis to one life. Life to life. Even if you talk about the latent tendencies, we talk it based on lives. We say normally the previous life is begot by the latent tendencies of the previous life. And as soon as the uh, Pratishanti Chitta arises in a particular life, latent tendencies start to follow our mind stream. So therefore, these potentials like Anusaya are normally explained separated from life to life. They cannot be separated like Chitta Chetasikas. But the life does matter in the sansara because these uh, for example even though they contain the same stream of nama same it's like chittas are keeping keep on arising and passing away these two lives have uh, very distinct characteristics uh, characteristics of a person from life to life can change even the habitual impact is there if you look into the jatakas for an example the bodhisattva the great being he being so generous in certain lives, but in some lives he ends up, he starts becoming a robber. A person who used to give whatever he has, in some lives he tends to take what from others without, without their consent. From the childhood, he sometimes he had these uh, notorious kind of qualities. So what was the reason? Reason was the Kama which gave the Patisandhi have a great influence to our characteristics in a particular life. But because he has developed lots of wholesome qualities in the sansara, in more, some of the lives he was able to give up his bad qualities and develop wholesome qualities and become a good man in the end. So therefore, the, what we cultivate in sansara do affect to our sansaric lives, futures, but life, a certain life is mainly governed, not completely, mainly governed by the characteristics which gave the Patisan, Kamma which gave the Patisan. So when we come to the lessons of Kamma, I will be explaining them so detailly how it is explained, the Patisan the Kamma is affecting our uh, temperaments. So likewise, a life is a production of a Kamma. You take three lives. So when the Nama Rupa process continues, so in this process, now if we take a one chitta, for example, the chitta which comes into this state of arising, existing and passing away, arising, existing and passing away, we call that state as the Dharma Upada. Dharma Upada means you don't find this term specifically in the commentaries, but you can fix this idea. Dharma Upada means a reality, the state of a reality which has come into any of the three status, three states like Upada, Piti, or Banga. And also Upada, for example, because I am following the formula. The formula says Imasa, uh, imas, imasa Upada. Imasa Upada Idam Upada. This is what we want to be able to clarify. So, this is a noun form, this is a verb, but they have the same meaning. Upada and Upajati, Upada, Upajati. We don't go into very distinct grammatical analysis on this. Just the thing is, 
because of some reality, another reality exists or arises or happens. So that is the normal idea. So if you go into grammatical expositions, we find this is a verb, this represents the action done by the subject, and this is a noun, and it, it represents the abstract, abstract action. So likewise, it can get complicated if I explain the philosophy of grammar in this point. But the thing is, you find when you read the commentaries, they, their idea was, they even the Buddha's idea was to explain that because of certain realities, certain rea other realities exist. That is, the, that is the point. So why do I go and we'll find out, why do I go to very uh, extensive analysis in this manner? Because when we want to apply all the theories into the causal relationships, so only when we explain it in such a detail, we are able to understand them very logically in a comprehensive manner. So that is why we go into such analysis. So whatever state, reality which has come into the, any of these three states, states arising, existing or passing away, that state of existing state is called Dharma Nupadana. Or the reality also we can call, but it's better to say the existing state. Sometimes we know the arising itself, arising, the only moment of arising is also called Upada. That is called uh, Udaya Avatha Upada. Right? Udaya Avatha. <coughs> It means the nature of arising. Nature, the moment it is arising. Arising means coming into existence, having not not existed before. Right? So I have given this uh, in the 9.14. 9.14 is the Avatta Upada. If you go into uh, the uh, Dharman Upada, is, you can see it in next page 9.421. 9.421, second page, 9.421, you find the Dharma Nupada. So they represent the reality, arising of the reality or the state of existing of the reality. Then the important points are, we find the latent tendencies, we know that, the Anusaya. If I say Avijja and Tanha, this is the latent, Anusaya, Avijja and Tanha. So if I write in Pali, I hope you understand this. Anusaya, Avijja and Tanha. So as long as they are not eradicated, they have the possibility of they have the possibility of arising as mental states. So they have the potential to arise. So based on this potency of arising, so when it's the example is given as when a, when a tree is tree which has certain kind of a liquid, we call it like white kind of liquid. So it's just a matter of fact that you uh, spike on this tree. As soon as you hit the tree with a, with a sharp instrument, the, 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 the white color liquid will come out. So in the same way, as long as we have not eradicated the defilements within ourselves, when we give a wrong attention to a certain object, def a defilement starts to ooze from us, come out from us. So therefore, these defilements which are uneradicated remain within us in the, with the potency to arise whenever the opportunity is given. When the opportunity is given, when we make the wrong ayamuso manasika, wrong attention. Then there is another state which is called the kamma. Kamma means here, Normally, we put the kamma into four stages. The moment we are doing the kamma, after we have done the kamma, certain energy remains within us. This energy in the commentarial literature is been is been termed as kamma samangita, kamma samangita. So that is what the Buddha mentions. If you have done a kamma, it will follow you. Sometimes it is explained like the fire which is under ashes. So as long as you go in the sansara, this will follow. If it is a bad karma, the expression was given like the cart, the wheel of the cart which follows the oxen. Or if it is a good karma, like your shadow, and it will bring the good results. So this we normally can say as the karma energy or the karma force. The commentary has explained this with the terminology karma samangita. So this karma samangita remains within us with the ability or potency, potency, potency to bring vipakas, to yield vipakas when the proper opportunity is given. So, Kamma Samangita remains within us. So, 
Jack, I'll tell that I'm a son in the Amma Samangita with the potency to bring results. So with the potency to give results. Ability to give results. So this one is to ability to arise as separate mental states. So that is the point. Now, this is the normally this happened uh, in the past life. So what happens was, when we are about to die, a certain karma falls. We have done lots of karmas in our past lives. So any of the karmas will come forth and gives a result. Why we are born as human beings? If you explain ultimately, in the previous life, the proximate causes, in the previous life, near to death, a kusala karma has come forth and given results. So that's why Buddha mentioned in a certain sutta, one sutta, the Deva realm is found because of wholesome deeds. The animal realm is found, is, can be found because of unwholesome deeds. Petas are found because of unwholesome deeds. So why these Sukati and Dugati realms, beings are found? Because of the wholesome and unwholesome deeds we have done. So therefore, if we want to define a human being in the ultimate sense, that is a creature or a living being or a Namarupa process which occurred due to a wholesome karma which came in front a moment near death. Sometimes it may appear few days before death or few months before death or it may have it may come forth from the moment we have done the karma. That is possible because one time when a certain person has given the dana, when Mahamukkalana was traveling in the Deva realm, he found an empty mansion. So then he came to the Buddha and mentioned there is an empty mansion and uh, when he asked the devas whose mansion he did, they say the person is still in the human realm because of a giving great dana, his mansion has already appeared in the deva realm, then he is still living in the human realm, he is about to die and be born there. And Buddha, when it is informed of the Buddha, Buddha mentioned, yes it is possible. So likewise certain kamas, after we have done certain kamas, they get manifested to give, they become destined, we are we become destined to be born in certain realms. So that is why the Anantariya Kamma. As soon as we have done that Kamma, our next destination becomes fixed. And it cannot be prevented. Other Kammas can be prevented. It means uh, my uh, wholesome Kamma comes in front to give a result and I am able to, uh, was supposed to be born in a divine realm. But if a Akusala Kamma comes forth, this can be obstructed. And I can be born in a Bad. Same way, a person who is uh, going to be born in a bad realm can be taken into a good realm because of an interruption of a wholesome karma. Yes. Just now mentioned, just mentioned, if that person has done Akusala, then he cannot go to that mansion. But that, that mansion already created. Yeah, it will, it will disappear. It will disappear. <laughs> right? It will disappear. So, uh, so the thing is, like, uh, uh, what the karma comes front and gives the result. So, for example, if I take this as a past life, for example, this is the past life. Now, this is our present life. So, this is the present life, B. Pachupana, I'll use the word Pachupana. Pachupana Jinta life. So, because of a certain karma, our Patisandhi has happened. That is the karma I wrote here. Right? So, this is the Patisandhi karma. A certain karma came from and gave our patisanti. So this patisanti, so this chitta also exists and passes away. So if I ask you a question, this now this patisanti arises. The arising of this patisanti chitta is called udaya avatta upala. It's the arising. So and also arising of all the chittas during this life is called udaya avatta upala. The arising. So when this Nam Rupa comes into the state of arising, passing away, arising, existing, passing away, during that existing moment, that we can call Dharmanupada. We can call it Dharmanupada, that state. So as long as we are born, the Anusaya will start to follow us. How does the Theravadiyas explain this point? That also I am planning to explain if the time allows in the, in, during this semester. It means how do we explain the Anusaya is within us? So the explanation goes, according to the fundamentals of the Theravadins, 
if a reality, if a khanda or reality, nama or rupa arises in a particular life, nama rupa which has not been thoroughly investigated. For example, we divide into five aggregates, rupa vedana, sanya, sankara, vijnana. So, if rupa vedana, sanya, sankara, vijnana, which has not been thoroughly investigated, arises in a particular life, from that moment onwards, the defilements are following us latently. So that is the explanation given by Theravada. So in the reverse order, it's, so how do we get rid of it? Get rid of it. So if you investigate the aggregates thoroughly, the ignorance of about these aggregates will be removed, so the latent tendencies will be uprooted. So that is also another point. So that's why I once mentioned, I know most of the time mentioned, it is not necessary to observe the present moment aggregates. Why is that? Because always an aggregate which arises newly has never been, cannot, is always never been observed. For example, aggregates which arise in Arahant also is never observed. Because new aggregate, new aggregate means a new aggregate. It has never arised before. So what you do in Vipassana understanding is, you come into a general understanding that whatever aggregate appears in the past, present or future, they all have the same nature. So you come into a phenomenal understanding. If someone says always the present aggregate has to be uh, observed in Vipassana, it's a wrong ideology. It is okay if someone do it, that's no problem. But if someone says it is the only way to observe, that leaves a big question. So when you are going to end up investigating the aggregates because all the aggregates which are arising are never investigated so that is so when we say an aggregate which has not been investigated arises it means the person's understanding about the rupa person's understanding about vedana about the idea of vedana about the phenomenon that the, the, the nature of vedana sanya sankara vijnana are not complete so vipassana meditation takes you to a understanding about the phenomenon. So that is why in Sutta Buddha mentioned, whatever vijnana arise, past, present, future are the same nature. You don't need to investigate all. So what happens is now I'll come back to this lesson uh, to this point. With this point. So an uh, aggregate which has not been thoroughly investigated it doesn't mean that particular aggregate. When it is said aggregate that are not thoroughly investigated means in a mind stream or a Namarupa stream, five aggregates arises and within that, within that Namarupa stream, understanding has not come into completion about the aggregates. So then we say these aggregates are not thoroughly investigated. Otherwise you can have a question when I say this statement. One day, whatever aggregate arises is never investigated because it has never occurred. So according to the Theravadians, when they say an aggregate which has not thoroughly investigated means this in this mind stream, the understanding has not come into the completion about the Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara and Vinya. So for example, a person, a Putujana person dies and new aggregates arise in the next life. So these aggregates are not thoroughly investigated. For example, Arahant. He becomes an Arahant. So now he is not meditating. For example, he becomes Arahant and he is doing something else. Now he is Arahant. So new aggregates arise. These aggregates are never investigated before. But we say he, the aggregates which arise to Arahant has been thoroughly investigated, thoroughly understood. Why? Because he got the wisdom at the moment of Arahant Magga, he got the wisdom about the aggregates in a general idea. He knows or oh, whatever aggregate arises is impermanent suffering and non-self and he has no ignorance about it. So it's a general idea about the aggregates, not particular aggregates. So when the understanding of insight meditation is about particular aggregates, it is not necessary that you investigate aggregates particularly. So that is why in the Theravada doctrine, we find the teaching, the meditation has been given in a, in a, in a such a manner, like, like, a, like, a, uh, like un understanding in general ways. So that's why you find observing the rupa 
uh, teachers have uh, instructed you can observe, you can contemplate on the uh, rupas which happen in the walking meditation while sitting. So thing is, it's an understanding. It is not that you are investigating the aggregates which arise on that moment. So uh, I wanted to emphasize this because when I say this statement, I'll come to the lesson again, this can have true understanding. That's why I wanted to clarify it. So again, I go to the fundamental of the Theravadians. According to them, Theravadians, an aggregate which, which is not thoroughly investigated, which has not been investigated thoroughly, arises in a particular life. From that moment onward, Anusya follows. So it means when the aggregates are, because if someone arises, means he is not an Arahant. It means the aggregates are not thoroughly investigated. The wisdom has not come into the culmination. So means Anusya starts to follow. Avijja and Tanha. So then, the next point is, so when Avijja and Tanha is not eradicated, so this, this is called, normally I, uh, I, I could try to give you the a tense for that. Upada is, this is called Upajjana Vaha Upada. I have given it in the handout. Upajjana Vaha Upada. You can find these terminologies in the Nidana commentary, commentary for Nidana Pali, which we are doing for our Pali reading actually. So then, this Upada is called Pala Vaha Upada. Alarahupada means, what does it mean? Because it's Kama Samangita, it has the capacity to produce a result. Upajana Rahupada means it has, the it has the ability, potency to arise as defined. So now, as long as the, the, if someone is born, Anusya is also following. So we call this, for example, if I take this thing as Upada 1, Upada 2, UP2, UP1, this is UP3. UP4. Right? So this is what? UP3. Because it's similar. So the Anusya has the potency to arise as it. So as long as the Anusya is not eradicated, our past kammas, the kammas which we have done in the past, maybe in this life, maybe in a past life, whatever life, are still following us. That is why a baby who is while still in the fetus, as a level of fetus, even he dies, he is born in a certain realm according to the karma. So what is the karma he has done? Just thinking we accumulate certain kammas, but these kammas are not capable enough to give a rebirth. To give a rebirth, that kamma should come in has a certain kind of energy. So therefore we call it kamma pata, a complete kamma. A person who is in the mother's womb, when she dies, when he or she dies, so how is he Roy born? Because he still has the past kammas in the sansara. So therefore, uh, kamas that we have done in the past still are activated. Activated means have the potency to give result within us. So that's what happened to Mahamukkala. That's what happened to Buddha. He sometimes, if you read the Apadana Pali, you find certain kamas which were done uh, even before he started the Deepankara's uh, dispensation. Uh, meeting Deepankara Buddha has, uh, has given results in the last life. So now as long as this Anusya remains, what happens? This Kammas, all the Kammas are still present in him to give result. So it's called Kamma Samangita. So it's called UP4. Similar. UP4. And it has the ability to give results. Results mean Vipaka. Vipaka and Kamaja Rupa, ability to produce results. Produce to produce results. So, then what happens, for example, if you take this present life, if we are at this moment, think we are here, think we are at this moment, still. So, what happens? As long as Avijja and Tanha, 
the, now this life is going to continue for sure because we are born so therefore it is going to continue we don't know when the death will happen but it is going to continue with the death so if you take this as the death what happens as long as avijja tanna is not eradicated as long as the, the uh, kama is still remaining our next rebirth our next life is it destined or not as long as we have these defilements we are supposed to be born how do we find this fundamental go to nakasika sutta nakasika call nakasika sutta i think i have given you this fundamental many times naka sika sutta buddha mentions the suffering a sota panna gets free is like the soil on the earth the suffering which is which remains to him is like the soil he has taken onto the fingernail so what does it mean he advocated that the suffering which is going to happen you are bound with it you are not free from that so it's also a certain kind of existence in the first uh, first uh, uh, first chapter we discussed about four types of existence within the paramattas conditioned paramattas not the unconditioned here it's a different different existence so within the par conditioned paramattas we found four types of existence that is the existence of these realities which come in manifest as, which come in the state of upadatiti banga the existence of these uh, latent forces which are not in the state of chitta chesikas but has an effect to our mind stream and also the vipaka uh, nama rupas which are going to happen in the sansara as long as the defilements are not eradicated and also here we are not going to discuss when a kama gets manifested to give results in the next life that is called uppa vinodama that is the vipaka chitta chesikas are also considered as existing so therefore there are four types of exina here we are discussing three except the upadinodam so the real the reality which arise darpa upada in the existence moment then the latent forces which are capable of arising as mental entities then also this kama samavita potential of kama which is able to give results and the suffering we are bound to suffering we are bound to so now now this is uh, the, uh, the thing is now if we talk about uh, avijja tattva so this is called this one we give a name as anupanna upada so this is up5 for example anupanna upada this is the same lecture i did last week but it was in the previous lecture i was giving all the details here we are going to form formula for you to understand only few parts of the uh, handout are taken here in the last lecture i was giving all doing all and it was like it was a full of information i'm just taking few uh, information that are necessary to understand how the how they are relevant to our understanding of dependent origination so now now this is the this is the chart now someone we were born in the past life so if you take this past pachupanna life this is past life In the past life we existed in a certain form maybe a deva or brahma or a human or an animal whatever it is and a certain kama came because we we didn't eradicate defilements kama still remain in the ability to give results the kama came front kama came in front right so i i try to write it in this manner a kama a certain kama came in front and gave the result as the patisandhi and then we are born here we are continuing at this moment still we have not eradicated the defilements and then we still have the kama force within us so and because of that we are about we are going to live the life even if you become arahant still this is going to happen is you cannot stop it that's why buddha even buddha could not stop the old age or death it is bound to happen because this life has already started as long as these defilements and kama remains this is suffering we are bound to this suffering so now what is the uh, process now think about now we call imassa upada idam upa this is the basic formula so we say avijja pachya sankhara for example avijja pachya sankhara avijja 
causes Sankara to come. Sankara means karma formation. Sankara means karma formation. Another thing to emphasize in Theravadins, when we say about avijja in the latent moment, and the avijja which arises as a mental state, we don't distinguish them as two, we don't distinguish them as two separate entities. It is the same avijja which was in the latent state comes into the state of a mental, mental factor. Then the next point is the kamma and the kamma samangita, the force of the kamma. We do a certain kamma. That kamma has its arising and passing the way. We give a dana, we start it, we finish. So the kamma has a limit. It has a rising and passing. After the kamma was done, a certain energy, kamma force remains. This is called kamma samangita. This samangita is not a separate ultimate reality. This is implanted in the mind stream because of this. So Theravadians don't distinguish them as separate two entities. We still, this samangita, when you investigate, analyze, literary, you find there are two states. That is true. But since our definitions are based on realities, we Theravadians talk about the realities, but they accept that they do accept a certain kind of forces which are latent. So these Kamma and Kamma Samangita, Theravadians would say they are the same reality. Kamma in the state of Kamma Samangita. Avijja in the state of latent tendencies comes into the state of a pariyuttana or a mental factor. The same way, Kamma which was as a mental state, Chetana, is now in the state of a Kamma Samangita, we call it energy. So in the Theravada doctrine, whether they refer to the Kamma or to the Kamma Samangita, they will mostly refer with the word Kamma. That's why Buddha mentioned the Kamma will follow you. If someone can ask the question, Bhante, Kamma has already passed away. According to your own doctrine, one can ask the question from the Buddha. According to you, that it is every impermanent. So if the Kamma has done me in the past life, what is following you? Why do you say that it's following? So it's a certain kind of energy, certain kind of a force, potency of the Kamma is following. Buddha didn't distinguish them as two separate entities. Otherwise, he should be telling to the both. That's why he used the same term. Kamma to both this energy and the while we are doing the Kamma. So the idea is based on these teachings, Theravadians advocate that these are not two states. The Kamma is in the state of a Kamma Samangita. So now, when we say that is, a, it's a very important point which didn't, I didn't mention here because if I have, now always I have to say if because of the time. So if I have the time to discuss about Paramatta Jatikas, which I initially intended to discuss within this program, in that case, I will surely be explaining this in detail about these, not separating them as two, two entities. So now, the thing, we come to the main topic, Avijja Pachya Sankara. So we put, it to the, put this into this formula, Avijja Upada Sankara Upajati. Upajati. So that is how we put it into this. Because Imasa Upada Idang Upajati. Because of the Upada of this, this exists. So here the first phrase is given to Avijja is the cause. Sankara is the result. Because of Avijja, Sankara exists. Sankara Upajati. What is this Upajati means? This is the point I want to emphasize. When we say Upajati, we always think about arising. Because we are accustomed to the only this uh, only this meaning of upajati upajati means which didn't exist happened to arise the commentaries say don't think that upajati only refers to this so upajati that's why we say we have five types of upada coming from non-existent to existent is a one type of upada being found in the, any of these three states of upada titi banga is also upada Found in the state of the potent, with the potential to arise is also upad. Found with the state of with the ability to give results is also upad. And also found in the state of not being released, not being free, aggregates from which you are not being free are also upad. So when we say upajati, it refers to all these five. It can be either a state of arising. A state of 
existing in any of these states, ability with the uh, potency to arise the later tendencies, with the ability having the ability to give a result, and being a nature which is not be free from. So when we say upanjati, that's why when I explain this translate, I do I did I was very careful not to translate it as because of this because this arises. When I, if I say arises, our mind only goes to this idea. Right? So now, so Avidya Bhatya is some kind of short formula of saying, but the basic formula is Imasa Upadam Idam Upajati. So, how do we explain this? Because of Avidya, for example, when we have ignorance about the Kama, we may do bad deeds. When we have the ignorance about the Deva realm, we may wish to be become a Deva or a Brahma and getting attached. But also I want to emphasize if someone wishes to be born in the heavens for the sake of attainment, this is admirable because it is not guaranteed that you will be able to attain Nibbana in this very life. So it is always safe that you make a wish to be born in a good realm as long as you attain the Nibbana. So that is you can find this in Sankhara Upatthi Sutta. Buddha didn't emphasize it to wish like that, but it shows that. And also, if you look into the Bodhisattva stories, that he was able to attain into higher stages only when you are born in such states. So it's very important that you are born in a human good realm. But for example, if someone is really attached to the divine pleasures, he may wish for such a life, or he may wish for a Brahma life, not knowing the real characteristics of the divine life and the Brahma. That is called because of ignorance, we do wholesome deeds. Because of ignorance, we do unwholesome deeds. So that is when the ignorance arises in our life. For example, if I show it in my finger, the ignorance arises, we do a karma. So that is a normal formula we have. So now, also we say, Pati Samupada, Avidya Sankara belongs to the past life. And uh, uh, some, uh, some of uh, the remaining, uh, the middle part of the present life, Jati Jara Marana belongs to the future life. So this is the normal formula. There are different formulas about talking about one Chitta Patitra Samuppada uh, 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 from another Chitta to another Chitta Patitra Samuppada. There are, in Abhidhamma we have different formulas of discussing Patitra Samuppada. But when you look into the suttas, we find it was explained basically from three lives. This is explaining about how the formula, how this life happens. There are different ways of explaining such suttas, right? So now the thing is now, for example, also it is also a fact which is mentioned by the Buddha. Some beings are born in certain lives because of the karma that we have done in the very past life. Because certain ascetics observe the beings who are dead, bo uh, dying, and be born. So, beings who are virtuous are born in woeful realms. Beings who are, holes, uh, who are unvirtuous are born in the uh, good realms. So, they got, un they got a misunderstanding The karma has no effect. So, Buddha mentioned it is not only the karma within this life can take you to a good or bad realm. A karma done in the past life or a very past past life can come in front and take you to a good or bad realm. So, therefore, now for example, think. For an instant, if we are born as humans because of a karma that we have done in a past, past, past life. For example, a past life, a karma. So this is not the immediately past life, a life before that. So when we do the karma, karma potency will remain within us. It will follow our mind stream. So in the previous life, immediate life, what happened? This potency still remains within us. This potency still remains within us. What is its potency? Ability to give results. What is it? It's called Pala Rahu Pada. It's called Upada. It is the ability to give results. So then, as long as the Avijja is not eradicated, this Kama has the potency to give results. When it is eradicated, it doesn't get the food, it will be not, it, it is not able to produce results. So what happens? Avijja Pachya Sankara means, we can also explain, because of ignorance, we do Kamas, that is one point. Another way of explaining, because of ignorance, latent ignorance, whatever, whatever javana chitta which arises, either become kusala or akusala, as long as avijja is not eradicated. The first time, first thing was, because we had ignorance in our mind, not knowing the, uh, being ignorant, we do akusala. 
Being ignorant, we do kusala to get pleasures. That is a one way of explaining. Another way of explaining, as long as we have latent tendencies within us, whatever karma we do becomes a kusala or a kusala. That's why, as long as you are not arahan, all the javana chittas become kusala or a kusala. Some may give results, some may not give rebirths. That is different. But they are defined and wholesome and unwholesome. Whether you wish or not. So then they can give a result. The next point is, even the Kamma belongs to a very fast life. So that Kamma is not done in this life. But that potency still remains. The Anusya still remains within us. So as long as Anusya remains, this potency has the ability to give results. What is its ability? Upada, Palara, Upada. Upajana Rahupada is the Anusaya, uneducated Anusaya. So this Adhijja supposed the Sankharas, supposed to be in the state of able to give results. So that is also called Adhijja Pachya Sankhara. So this will be very clear when we go to the negation. Adhijja Niroda Sankhara Niroda. For example, Nirodo. Now, when they come to this formula, it will be very clear. Avijja Nirodo Sankara. How do we explain this? Avijja Niroda means not the eradicating Avijja. You can never eradicate the Avijja which has arisen in your mind. A Sankata reality, condition reality which arises, will automatically pass away. You cannot stop it. And there is no way to interrupt it. Buddha mentioned uh, conditions of the Sankatas will arise pass away and alternation is seen during the existence. So no one can interrupt after it has arisen, momentarily arising and passing away. So what we are eradicating is the potential, the avijja which is latent within us. So what happens? Because for example, at the moment of attaining magga, there is no unwholesome thoughts in the mind. If it is then the magga meditation becomes mixed with unwholesome. So there is no unwholesomeness even close to the meditation. So when we attain the highest path, the potency of avijja, anusya of avijja will be removed. That is called avijja niroda. So when, we, when the avijja is niroda, eradicated, sankara is removed. How to understand this point? You go to the Ratana Sutta. I mentioned this in the last week also. Ratana Sutta, Buddha mentioned the last stanza explained the attributes of the Sangha. Kinam Purana Navam Nakti Sambhava. This refers to the Kamma. He is not producing any new Kammas. Why does it mean? When the Avijja is being eradicated, when the Avijja is being eradicated, for example, now we are in this life, for example, if we take, Avijja is being eradicated. The javana chittas which arise within us become just functional chittas. They are not capable of giving results. They are, he is not producing any new kammas. That is the first point. So when we say avijja niroda, sankara nirodhu, when the avijja is removed, the sankharas which would have happened. So avijja niroda means giving up the avijja, potential to avijja, it means eradicating the avijja. That would have happened if the Arahatta Magda was not attained. So this avijja is removed, the potency. So when the potency is removed, if now the comes, thing comes, if the potency was there, what happens? Whatever Javana we uh, did would have been Kusala or Kusala. It can be, intensity can be different, but whatever Kama, either Kusala or Kusala, because of the influence of the latent tendency. When it is removed, whatever action we do are just fruitless, they are just functional. That is called, he is not accumulating new karma. But Buddha also mentioned, Kinam Purana. So how do we explain this Kinam Purana into this formula? It means, when the avijja is removed, the karma which was done in the past, which remains the state of the Kama Samangita, the karma which was done remains in the Kama Samangita. That's why I mentioned Buddha didn't distinguish with, this, with these two states. He referred to the term Kama always. Kama follows you. 
which was done in the past. Kina Purana means the karma which was done in the past and which remains in this energy state. I would call this energy, karma samangita state. What happens? This karma loses its ability. This is the point. Loses its ability to give a rebirth. Not just results, but a rebirth. So when a karma loses its ability to give a rebirth, that karma is said to be eradicated. Kama cannot be eradicated because kama a vidya is not against kama. Vidya eradic wisdom eradicates avidya. Because it's like the light eradicates darkness. Light doesn't eradicate heat. Heat is eradicated by cold. So likewise, vidya is opposite of avidya, not opposite of kama. So how do we eradicate the kama? Why the kama has the ability to give results? As long as the defilements remain, they are the food. With the support of defilements, karma can produce a new life. With the support of defilements, karma can produce a new life. But when the defilements are removed, this ability will be gone. So, avicca, niroda, sankhara, nirodo here means one way is he is not accumulating new kamas because the latent tendency is removed. The other way is the past kamas which had the ability to give results, which were called the Pala Rahu Upada. Because of this Upada, Upajana Raha Upada is removed. Pala Raha Upada it comes into the state of Apala Raha Niroda. Kama still remains, Kama is still found. That's why Mahamogalana got affected. Kama is still found. But they loses the ability to give a new river. So when we say Avidya, Niroda, Sankara, Nirodo, so we have to explain it in both the ways. So if we want to explain in both the ways, the second way is only possible if we distinguish them giving these terminal. So what the tradition has done. They have meticulously investigated the tradition, teachings of the Buddha very thoroughly because there are lots of evidences to show these kinds of states in suttas, in gathas. So bringing them, he explained, they explained that there are few types of upada and that is how we say when avijja is removed, sankara is removed, sankara is eradicated two ways. He is not accumulating new sankaras. The past sankaras which had the potency to give a rebirth comes into the state of incapability of giving a rebirth. So that karma is said to be eradicated. So that a very famous term, kamakkaya, is said, or uh, kamakkaya is means he eradicates kamma. Two ways of eradicating kamma. He eradicates the kamma that would have arisen if the avijja was not removed. It is removed because when the avijja is removed, the kamma which would have arisen otherwise is not produced. It is it is an eradication. The next way of kamma eradication is kammas which were done in the past comes into the state of uh, infertile life. It, they are not able to give results, give a rebirth any further. So that is why I mentioned in the last week, because last week I just gave a, just an uh, a explanation of detail information, just points. So I've thought of bringing this into a practical formula. So I, what I want to say, I'm not going to continue this particular samuppada, but I want to emphasize is, how important it is that we analyze the terminologies in such a manner. So this Niroda, this is our Niroda, this is called Anupajana, uh, as I remember, uh, if I remember, it was termed as uh, uh, Anupajana Niroda, and this becomes Apalavaha Niroda. You can find in the page number four, uh, page number five, you can find it page number five, uh, 5.3 and 5.4. So likewise, they have various types of an upada and niroda, 5.9.5.3 uh, and 9.5.4. Uh, so these kind of upada and niroda we find, so they are very useful for us to have a comprehensive understanding of uh, dependent origination. So I'll conclude the lecture. So in the next lecture, after 15 minutes, I'll be going into uh, the new topics of city.
jara and understand jati jara marana this phenomenon so if you have any questions please raise yeah so we can take a break we'll meet in after uh, 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 uh,